Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge, and welcome to Terra Nil. Now we did play this a couple of years ago, but back then it was all pixely. It was a pixel art game, but they've taken that and remade it into a non-pixely game. And it's gorgeous, it's very, very pretty, it's wonderful to look at. So this is a game about the environment, where you turn up on a planet that is not in a good way at all. It's all barren and desolate and destroyed, and we have to help nature re-establish itself. So using fancy future tech, we'll add things like plants and trees, trees and water and wildlife and all that good stuff until everything is lovely again but then we have to remove all that tech after we're done we need to tidy up after ourselves and leave the planet as a natural unspoiled paradise so this is due out on the 28th of march for both pc and mobile there is a link to the terra nil website in the video description below if you're interested and a portion of the steam sales will be donated to the endangered wildlife trust which is a charity that looks after endangered wildlife and their habitats which i think is all rather the wonderful and because i did get a key from the publishers to play the game thank you publishers i didn't buy it myself so i made my own donation to the endangered wildlife trust because that seemed like the right thing to do but anyway enough waffling on let's go and get all environmental okay here we go and we do have this wonderful little book here to help us out a bit it's full of useful information about how to reclaim the landscape and sort the environment out and all that kind of stuff which is very handy and also it's really pretty there's a lot of wonderful artwork in this book there's some nice light drawings down there of animals and plants go back a little bit and you've got full color drawings of animals and plants and then if you go to the buildings bit I do like this you get some nice color drawings of buildings that we might be able to get our hands on at some point and they're very pretty but then if you go forward a little bit you get technical diagrams of the buildings I mean okay they're not overly detailed but I like the fact that there are some technical specification type things look that's how the blades spin and there's some pie charts and that's how some wheels go around and there's a picture of the face of a bird for some reason I'm not quite sure why but there is a bird's face in a circle and that's important to the turbine apparently I like that I like the fact there's all this kind of extra detailing that doesn't need to be here but I like the fact that it is it's just really pretty and really well drawn exciting to look at so that's quite wonderful but if we go back to here for a second it does say over here the first step in any restoration endeavor is to restore water and plant life to begin with, increase the greenery in this valley with irrigators, pumps and toxin scrubbers. Okay, so job number one, make it less brown and more green. Okay, gotcha. I think we can go and have a look around and see what's happening. Oh, there's a little kind of spaceshipy thing. And it's just kind of exploded and turned into leaves. Okay, so that's delivered our first kind of drop off of currency. So our currency is kind of your know, nature points or leaf points or whatever. But that's our currency that we work in. And if we have a look around, it does indeed look quite barren and desolate. Look at that. There's a few rocks. There's a few very dead looking trees dotted around the place. There are quite a few good areas where water might flow. There's some good kind of gullies going along here. So some little kind of streams there and then bigger rivers along here when we get to that point. So that's quite good. But yeah, it's not looking good, is it? So here we go. Job number one. Let's try and make it look a little bit greener, shall we? So the moment, yeah, we've got 0% greenery coverage. And that's our primary goal. We want to get that filled up. Can we do that? I'm not entirely sure. We'll give it a good go. So job number one, let's get at least a little bit of green around the place, shall we? So I think what we'll do is let's maybe start over here look that looks like quite a good standard starting point it's not exactly in the middle but i think it'll give us some good space to get some grass down or whatever so what we have to do first is we need to build a turbine we need a turbine to actually generate power in the first place and that generates power in that region there so if we just pop that down like that we spend 75 of our leaf points and now we have a lovely turbine and look at that that's very pretty and there it is just spinning around ready to provide power to some things so now we need this we need toxin scrubbers so the ground is full of toxins and we can't grow anything in that ground because it's just too horrible and kind of irradiated or whatever so we need some toxin scrubbers so if we do that that converts the ground into fertile soil and then of course in the fertile soil we can grow grass and plants and trees and lovely things so let's get as many of these as we can as far away from the turbine as we can so it looks like the turbine can be yeah it provides six power and they require one i think okay so if we put one let's put one on each kind of side let's put one over there look can it go right on the edge yes it can it can sort of stick out of the uh, range of the thing a little bit the turbine because it connects to this side of it by the look of it so yeah okay so pop that there look and then we have oh, look at that 
some lovely, fertile, not completely destroyed soil, which is lovely. And then if we do the same sort of down here, look, that'll pop in more fertile soil. A little bit of the same sort of thing over there, possibly. Very nice. And then exactly the same thing just there. Okay, so now we've got a load of ground that is ready to be so you know, reseeded and repopulated with lovely green things. And to do that, we can get an irrigator. Creates greenery by watering nearby clean soil. Greenery generates resources and it can be rotated. And the rotation of that is quite important. And if we get 800 more greenery tiles unlocked, we then get ourselves a new thing. We get a new toy to play with. However, Let's get this first. So if we put this down, you'll notice that it does have two kind of bits sticking out of the bottom, two sort of uh, T-shaped bars, I suppose. And you can rotate them round, and that dictates which way the sort of the greenery is going to come out of this thing, if you like. So uh, yeah, if we put one in the middle, for example, we could put one there, so it's facing like that. So if we put one there, that highlighted green area will be covered in lovely grass or whatever, but then it's not gonna cover over here and it's not going to cover down here. So I'm not quite sure what the best approach is with this. I mean, do we put them... Uh, hang on, hang on. If we put one there, look, sort of over in the corner, so it's going to cover quite a lot of space. I think, let's drop that in, we'll see what happens. So it goes in, and then look, it kind of sprays water out, and then we've got grass. We've got lovely grass, look. It's not as desolate anymore, look. We've got green, everybody. It's a huge, huge, big step forward. Lovely greenness. And in fact, look. You can zoom quite a lot in and have a little look at the grass that we've just made. Yay! Right, okay, so good start. We're 8% of the way through covering this with green stuff, which is good. So how about then if we get another one of those sort of down there doing a similar thing? So can we put that there? No. So if we put that um, there, so it fills in that gap there. So again, sploosh. Nice. Look at that. That looks pretty good. 16% covered. We need another 467 bits of green to get the next thing. And then I think if we just sort of put one... Hang on, hang on. Could we make the most of this? So hang on. Give us that for a second. Let's put... Let's put a turbine just there. And then can we get another one of these things like that? Look. So that'll turn more of that soil all nice. And then if we get that in and rotate it so it's doing it in a line like that. That's going to cover quite a lot. The only thing is we are missing out on the stuff over there. Although I don't think we can really get to that over there. We can get to a tiny, tiny bit of it over there. That's not really worth doing. There's no more rocks over there. Um, okay, do you know what? For now, that might have to do. So hang on, go back to there. And yeah, what covers more? That's 90, that's 95, that's 90. Right, put it in the middle. That's going to cover 95 squares with lovely green. So there we go. Sploosh, out comes the water. And we've got a lot more green going on. And then, okay, could we, could we put a turbine just there? And then could we get one of those? Yes, perfect. Like that just there. So that's going to turn all that lovely and fertile. And then can we get another one just there, look? So again, got plenty of these green points because you top them back up, I think, when you get green down on the map. And then can we put, say, that... Uh, I want it to cover that one little gap there. So yeah, we'll put that like that. So all that ground over there should be nice and green. And then if we rotate that round in the best way... Uh, what's going to be the best thing? That's 130, 145, 152, 157 green we can get from that. That's not too shabby at all. So yeah, okay, we'll have that. 157 points of green coming our way. Very pretty. And then where do we go next? Do we go possibly over here? Okay, so if we get another one of those there and another one of those down there, that's now a lot of space over here that we can get some more green into. And I think if we just do it like that again, if we push it like that, we need to get 154 greenery tiles to unlock the next thing. Can we do that? Um, we can, but we're going to leave a gap in the middle. I'm not really happy with leaving a gap. I'd like all our green to be sort of, you know, linked together. So hang on a second. Hang on. Could we... Here's a thought. Here's a thought. Put that over there, look. So that's going to go up there. I was a little bit there that I've missed out botherations. Never mind. Um, and then 
if we do that, 158, 154, 161. Yeah, we'll have 161, please. So do that. And that means that we've unlocked a new thing. And it is a water pump. Pumps, uh, pumps water to fill dry riverbeds. Riverbanks are cleansed by the water. Range is extended by elevation. Okay, so it needs power and it provides water. Okay, this is exciting. So hang on a minute. Hang on. So if it's really high up, it's going to do a lot of good work. So hang on, it has to go. Oh, it's got to be within power range. Of course it has. So if I put a thing just there, if I put a little water pump just there, water is going to go into those into those rivers to where it's green, I think. In fact, hang on, is it going to go all the way over there? Let's just put one down. So we've got a nice water pump going in. Oh, and look, green appears along the side. That's wonderful. I like that. And then we've got some lovely water and it looks so lovely. Look at that. It's really pretty. That's very nice to see. Okay, that's good. Do we have any rocks that are ah, over here? Look, this is perfect. Hang on a second. Put that in like that. And then can we start thinking about, yes, look at that. Because that's high up, I think. Is that high up? I don't know. It might be high up, but it looks like it covers a lot of uh, a lot of area with a lot of water. So yes, please put that down and look at that. It's green. It's so lovely and green along the banks of our rivers. That's very good. 47% covered already. That is not too bad at all. What else can we do with water? We must be able to get some more water in. Um, uh, we could put one there, look. That wouldn't be too bad. Drop that in and that can start filling that up with water. That's very good. Um, a water pump. Um, put another one there, but there's no point. That'll just fill up around this corner. But you know what? It might be worth doing. So fill up just sort of round here with some, some nice green tiles. That's good. We need another 120 resources to unlock the next thing. Does that mean anything? Does that mean anything at all? Oh, hang on a minute. The tree. The trees are no longer kind of thin, sticky trees like those ones. So, you know, barren and dead trees. They're lovely and lush and green. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay. Um, I think, is that going to be it for water for a while? I suspect so. I think we've covered quite a lot of water. It's only over here where we don't have the full sort of supply of water. Although, actually, hang on a minute. We put a thing there and then put, say, a water pump just there. That, I think, will pump water all the way down there. That's some more things coming our way. <gasps> it met up. Okay, I think all of the available gullies and streams and rivers and everything are now full of lovely, fresh, clear water. Oh, that is wonderful. That is majestic. Right, I think then, let's go over here. We'll put that down and we'll do exactly what we did before over here. So we'll get the nice fertile soil set up and then we'll start putting down lots of lovely, um, you know, irrigators. I'm going to call them green innators, but you know what I mean? Things that make it green. Um, yeah, like that. The thing is, yeah, what is the best thing to do with this? Um, I think we put one there because that's quite a good one. So there you go. That's all nice and green. Oh, and we've unlocked a calcifier. Crystallizes nearby greenery, creating rocks. Ah, right. Okay, I see. So if we did need, say, some more power over here, because we can't get a turbine over there, we could put that down and that will make that sort of green there rocks. And then we get a turbine down and we could work on that land there. Okay, for the moment, we're okay. We don't need that right now, but we might need that at some point soon. So hang on. So if we then do that there, that's going to be a whole lot more green going on. That's very good. And then what do we do here? How do we deal with this? Because that's only going to get 10. I mean, it's better than nothing. It's better than no, no, no green at all. But it's only 10 more. Do you know what? We'll put it down anyway. There we go. Look, that was a couple of percent, was it? That's not too shabby at all. Okay, that's good. And then we do the same thing over here. Look, exactly the same sort of thing. So get that down to make the soil nice. Soil nice. That one there for lovely soil. That one there for lovely soil. And then we get some more green innators in and we put that one. Ah, bother. I want it to be I want it to be where that thing is. Hang on, we might have to do this a little bit different. Can we turn it round so it's I think I just skipped past it. Hang on. 
So it's like that look. So we could put one. Uh, no, not that's not how you do it. One there then. So drop that in. So whoosh. And then drop another one in, say, uh, again there. Not ideal. That's 140 green points coming our way. That's very lovely. Can that accommodate anything else connected to it, that wind turbine? I think it probably can. So if we, say, put that there, 109, 122 points of green there. So do that. And then that's lovely in green. Right, we're up to 93% coverage. And it looks immediately better. It looks so much nicer. Look at it. It's all pretty and wonderful. I think maybe what we could do... Uh, we've got some rocks over there. So pop a thing on there. And now we can get, say, one of those in over here. Which is good. And then possibly one up there as well. And then can we just... Can we get one of those in... Sort of working like that, possibly. 102, 101, 102 points like that. Okay, so get that in. Oh, and it's gone to 100% in the corner. And there we go. We've done that. Okay, so we've done step one. Step one is complete. So we've made it green enough. Uh, once the backbone of the ecosystem is thriving, your next step is to increase the diversity of growing plants. Introduce finbos, finbos, wetlands and forests. You'll also need to begin to pay attention to the local climate. Okay, so now we need different types of sort of biomes, if you like, which is quite exciting. Again, all that sort of locked away, which is a shame, but there we go. Have we not got information about the other things we've unlocked? Okay, never mind. Right. So now what do we have? So we can go back to the phase one things. We can go back over here and unlock these. We have an excavator. Creates a new riverbed, but poisons the land around it. Can be rotated. Oh, it's like a great big kind of tunneling cannon type thing. But yeah, it doesn't do very well for the land where you place it because it blasts whatever's underneath it and turns it back to barren wasteland. Ah, okay. So we can go back and use these, but now we've got this here. So we've got a hydroponium. Creates wetland. Must be built on irrigator near water and on low ground. Okay. And then we've got a beehive. Swarming bees pollinate nearby greenery, creating finboss flowers. Okay, so finboss flowers, like sort of your know, meadow flowers or whatever. Um, and then, oh, reclaim 150 more finboss tiles to unlock. I notice there are... Are there bees here already? It looks like there's something buzzing around. Some sort of wildlife has happened, which is quite exciting. So if we put, say, that in a tree, we go, okay, yep, 115 bee points go into there. <gasps> Oh, look at that. Oh, it's really pretty. Okay, we've unlocked a solar amplifier. Focuses sunlight, allowing for the starting of a controlled burn. Okay, now I recall that from before, the controlled burns. I can't remember what we did with the controlled burns. Why would we want to do that game? Remind me. Oh, because then you can build forests on the ground or whatever. Okay, right, that's fine for now. So we've got plenty of the Finboss stuff. And then we need... Yeah, 100 more ashy nutrient tiles. That's what we need. So I think, where's going to be a good place to get that sorted? There's a tree there. There's a tree there. There's a couple of trees over there. Hang on, hang on. Get, we can only put these beehives into trees. So we might as well just sort of drop them in like that. And that's that sorted. So we've got plenty of those points sorted. Right, so we're sorted for finboss or finbows. Um, and then we want to get, yeah, wetland. Must be built on an irrigator near water. Okay, so we've got a couple of candidates. In fact, we've got quite a lot of candidates. That one's near that finboss stuff. So how about we put it... Uh, where can we put these? I think maybe this here... Oh no, I shouldn't have put it on that tree there because that would have been good for wetlands. Okay, how about then a solar amplifier can come in and... Okay... Fires can only be started in Finboss or Tundra, but can spread to greenery. Okay, so if I put a solar amplifier down just there, is it going to annihilate all that lovely, lovely stuff we just put down? Uh, if we put it there, it's not going to go across the river. Uh, okay, I'm not quite sure how this is going to work. We're just going to put it down and see what happens. Let's put one of those in. So, yeah, there we go. And, uh, okay... Do we, do we click that? Start to control burning nearby Finboss. Fire will burn sparse vegetation, but will leave behind nutritious ash. 
Okay, lovely. Do that then. So start a fire, I don't know, there. That, that looks good to me. Zoom. Okay, right. Um, okay, there's, there's quite a, there's quite a lot of fire. Okay, there's that, okay, that went significantly further than I thought. However, we have now sorted that out. Can the fire go out now, please? <laughs> the fire needs to stop. Okay, okay. Right, there's, there's quite a lot of, of, uh, sort of, you know, destroyed ashy land there now. I kind of feel like we've undone a good lot of our work, but we can now make an arboretum. The arboretum goes on the buildings that we just burnt down, which was quite a lot of them. Oh dear. Okay. <laughs> 170 tree points. So we put it there. 138 minus 11. Why is there minus 11 over there? That's 29. Okay. So putting it over here seems to be the best. 175 tree points we get for that. So drop that in and then we get a lovely forest. Okay. Good stuff. That's minus 65. That's minus 52. Okay, that's that's not that's not going to help. Why is that? Hang on, why isn't that going to help? I don't understand. It surely should put forest on that. I'm going to I'm going to click it and see what happens. I'm going to click it and we're going to get some forest. That's good, isn't it? Isn't that good? Oh, they look lovely. Look at the nice dense forest we've got now. And then arboretums in the middle with a spinny kind of watering crane thing. That's quite good. Okay, right. So, got some forests in. Not got enough forest, but it's looking okay. Forest is looking sort of good. Uh, we haven't got hydroponiums yet. Not got that sorted. Maybe what we could do is, over here, let's make that our kind of wetland area. So what we might need is a calcifier to go just there to create some rocks. And then we can put a wind turbine thing just there by the river. And that means we can get some of this in. So we can get one in, uh, in fact, no, let's do what we did before. So one in over there, one, can we fill in that gap down there? There's a bit of a gap. I don't want to leave a gap like that. Look, so that fills in that bit. And then can we get another one over here somewhere to fill in those gaps? So yeah, I think we can do that. Look, that's going to turn that ground into lovely ground that we can use. That's very nice. And then, yeah, if we put that onto... Oh, hang on, now we need the thing. Hang on, we need the, the things first. Where are they? Irrigators. There we go. That's what we need. So if we put one of them across this side, um, hang on, like that look, so at sort of right angles. So put that there, that's going to fill that up with grass. Yay, lovely grass. And then over here, if we put, if we put one, hang on, hang on. Can we have one going sort of right angles like that? Is that acceptable? Does, does the game like this? Uh, so if we put that there, it's going to fill in that little bit over there. Right, okay. So that's filled that bit up. That's not too bad at all. And then can we get another one sort of over here just to fill in that final bit over there? Yes, we can. Okay, so there you go. Whoosh over there. And then can we turn that into wetland? So 70. Apparently we... Oh, no, hang on. Right, when we do that, it tells us how much wetland we get. So pop that onto there. And that's going to turn it into swampy land. This is marvellous. Okay, so when that goes, yay for swamps. Okay, so a bit of swampy land going on. And then we've got some of that stuff over there. We still need a bit more forest, which means we might have to burn down some more trees, I'm afraid. Um, hang on, though. The control burn, only it's going to destroy this entire bit over here. That's going to be very foresty and very destroyed. Do we do this one here? Maybe we have to do a control burn on that thing there. Right, hang on a second. We need to do this and it's it's going to be painful because we're going to undo all this wonderful work we did. Um, okay, so where are we going to put? Hang on, we're going to put this thing over here, look. But that's going to burn down. It's going to take all these things down with it. So in the middle of here, there's going to be we need a forest sort of uh, whatever that is, an arboretum somewhere, which would go better in the middle. So I wonder if we just put that there and then click on that and say start a fire just there, please. This is probably a terrible idea, but OK, there we go. Right. So lots of lovely ash is now being formed. However, it is going to destroy quite a lot of stuff. It doesn't destroy the wetland. It, OK, it destroys a bit of the wetlands. It's blown up the thing over there. Okay, never mind, but that's now plenty of land to get all this stuff down. Okay, so we could put it there for 52, 54. If we put a bit there and a bit 
there and a bit down here. Is that going to be okay? So 75 if we put that there. So 75 tree points. And then a bit over there, look for 31 tree points. And we've got a lot of lovely trees. Okay. Um, I think, I mean, there's a little gap in there. I'm going to put that in just to fill that in with lovely trees. Yay for the lovely trees. Right. Okay. Looking pretty good. We need more wetland. Now we need to get some more wetland in. Okay. Maybe, maybe we do the same thing over here that we did over there. Turn that into a bit of a wetland. Or over here, look, there's nothing going on over there. Hang on. Go back. Get us a calcinator, calcifier thing. Pop that there. Get us a wind turbine. So yay for power. And then, yeah, make that all lovely and you know, lovely and fertile soil. And then that bit there as well. So yay for the fertile soil. And then we should, hang on, if we tilt it the right way as well, we could probably get that in like that. So do that. So that fills that up with green. We get some more sort of money back, if you like. And then we go to there. Turn that into wetlands. And that is lovely. Okay, so a little bit of wetlands. And we've unlocked the research centre. Okay, reduces the cost of some buildings and unlocks the ability to manipulate the region's climate. That seems like a good thing that we should possibly have. Um, constructing a research centre makes many primary reclamation buildings cheaper. Okay, where do we put it? Let's put it up here on this hill, because I don't see us using that for much else. So pop it up there. Okay, and now you've learned the basics of restoration, you need to begin to address the regional climate. Okay, how do we do that? The climate is defined by these attributes. Right now we're only interested in humidity, but these will change in the future. Okay, so we've got a humidity value currently of 38%. Reaching certain thresholds of attributes will have broad effects on the environment. Okay, so if we manage to get over 40% humidity, we'll start getting fungi in forests. Now, 55% is ferns on riverbanks. 80% humidity is water lilies. 90% humidity is salmon. And then 70% is when we get some rain. Oh, that's exciting. Buildings that grow plants, like the irrigator of the beehive, are also affected by regional climate attributes. Oh, Okay, so of course, as with anything, there are pros and cons. We make the humidity higher and we get you know, water lilies and salmon, which is very exciting, but it means some of our buildings don't work quite as well. Okie doke, right, I see. Many buildings modify the climate slightly, but some, like this cloud cedar, change it significantly. Oh, wow, this is very exciting. Cultivating the right climate is an important step in your reclamation journey. Good luck. I suspect I might need it. Hang on a minute. Cloud cedar. That sounds like a fun thing to have. Uses surrounding water and ocean to encourage cloud formation and increase ambient humidity. So if we put that there, that's going to make everything 8% more humid. Well, let's do that. That sounds like a fun thing to do. And now we've got mushrooms. Hooray, we've got mushrooms in the forest. That's very exciting. Okay, can we put another one in? Possibly over there. That's quite good. We'll do that. Now we have ferns on riverbanks. Okay, what is coming up next? We need to go up to 80% for the for the next thing. That's quite a long way. Oh, it tells you where you are. It tells you where those markers are. So that's where we currently, well, we're past that. So that's where that goal was with the green marker. And that white marker in the top corner is where the water lilies blossoming is going to appear. Yeah, we're way off from that right now. That's okay. We'll sort that out in a bit. I'm thinking possibly what we need to do is we need to get, we need more wetland. We're struggling. 62% wetland. We could get some more wetland down here. That wouldn't be so bad. That isn't near to the wetland thing, but we could, could we do anything over here? If we put one, hang on a minute. If we put one of those, say there, would that help with making wet? Oh no, because the ground isn't good enough. Is it? Hang on a minute, hang on. We need one of those. So pop that in like, uh, hang on, hang on. Like that. Put that in there. Fertile soil, yay. That's good. And then can we get another one of those in over here, possibly? Pop that in. So get some more fertile soil in the middle there. That's quite handy. We just have that done anyway, I think. But yeah, so if we turn all that into... 
uh, lovely grass. Yeah, hang on a minute. Turn that into grass. I'm trying to sort of plan ahead in my brain what we've got to do. So that's all grass. And then put that there. That's going to turn... The oh, because it's ideal conditions, it became like a little meadow. Oh, look, and there's little plants and insects and things. Yay, right, okay. Uh, and then, yeah, that's going to give us 90 wetland, which I think should help us complete that goal. I think that is it done. Ah, hang on a minute. But now we're down on Finboss because we set fire to a lot of it. Um, okay, okay. How do we sort that out? Ah, we can put bees in any of the new trees that we've just grown. Okay, right. Okay, so where are we going to put our new fin boss? Uh, maybe over here, look. Um, that's going to give us four. That's not enough. That's minus nine. That's zero. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, we need some trees that are near nothing else. Any, a tree that's near nothing else? That's not going to help. That's minus... Hang on, we're going to put it... Where was one which had a plus? There was a plus over here somewhere. And it that looked positive. Yay. Four. Okay, we'll go for that. We'll put that in. So that's now all fin boss stuff. 78%. Okay, how are we going to do this then? This is quite tricky. Is there a tree that we haven't spotted? Do we have an errant tree somewhere that I've not spotted that we could sort of use as a beehive house? I don't think there is. I don't think there is. Okay, what we might need to do is then, we might need to... So get some green land set up over here. So hang on, go back to there. Can we put... We could put that there, look. Hang on, drop that in. That's going to make that all nice and green. And then, no, nice and fertile. And then we can make that all nice and green, look. So yay, green land. And then we go here, pop a beehive in that tree, and it's going to get plus one. Okay. Right, but we have got some more fin boss going on. Um, can we put another one over there? 32, yeah, perfect. That's perfect, yeah. Okay, put it in that tree. And we've completed the goal. Okay, oh, we get a new bit. With plant life and climate re-established, your final step is to construct an airship by recycling your buildings. As you remove your presence, introduce Fauna to be the new custodians of this ecosystem. And this is where I like this game particularly. So we've come here onto this planet and we've gone... Yeah, look at us. We've turned it from a barren wasteland into this lovely place. There's grass and bees and marshes and forests and fungus and everything else, and it's wonderful. Um, but then, yeah, we kind of want to go away now. We're kind of done. Yeah, we think, yeah, okay, it's fine. We've made an okay job of this. It's not perfect. There's a few gaps in it, but overall, it looks much better. Go and live in this nice middle bit, and it'll be lovely. Um, but we can't just leave all our tech behind, because in all honesty, it doesn't really go. It kind of ruins the natural aesthetic of things. So now we have to sort of tidy up a bit, which is wonderful. I love that idea. So an airship allows for the construction of the airship with materials recycled from other buildings. So now we build an airship and then we deconstruct all of our buildings and pop them into the airship and the airship flies away. And then if people were to come by, if aliens were to land here or whatever, or some of the people were to land here, they'd look around and find no evidence that we were ever here. And they go, oh, this is a nice planet. Lovely, wonderful. Let's have a nice party and a cup of tea or whatever. But, you know, that's, I like that. I like that we're tidying up after ourselves. The only thing is, how does this work exactly? So if we put that over there, why? Hang on. There seems to be a set area where we can put this. It can only land in certain places. Is that correct? So why can't we land it over there, for example? Is it because it's near, I don't know, the centre of the map or something? I don't know. I think. We'll put it there for now. So drop that there. Right, so that is where we're going to build the airship. Recycling silo. Recycles of the buildings and stores a portion of their cost. So if we put that down somewhere over here, for example, that's going to recycle all of our buildings over here. We need to make sure we get all the buildings. So all the ones in the corners, we have to remember to go and grab. So if we say... Okay, so if we put that down just there, then that's going to go whoop, recycles all of those. That is wonderful. So 45 resources now stored in there. Okay, reach 10% recycling to unlock whatever that next thing is. That's quite exciting. Um, and then we'll get, how much are they? 50 apiece. We can't build infinite amounts of these. So we have to be relatively frugal with them. So if we put that Oh, that's a bit annoying, isn't it? We can't get all of those four things. Okay, we'll put that just there. 
So that's going to get these three. So hoover them up. And in we go. Still not quite ready with that just yet. This one should be quite good. That'll grab all of those ones over there. That's many, many things that it can hoover up. Okay. So now we have a recycling drone. Travels across, along rivers to collect recycled material from loading docks. Construct one more recycling drone to unlock. Okay, hang on a minute. Recycling drone. Oh, it had to be next to a river of some sort. Because now we have little boaties going along picking stuff up. Right, loading dock. Loads recycled material from the surrounding buildings and silos onto a recycling drone. Ah, okay. So that one is a little bit too far away, unfortunately. So I made a bit of a boo-boo with that one. That's not going to work. Um, hang on, though. We could sort those out over there. So if we pop that down there like that, that's perfect. That's going to grab loads. And then we put a little dock just there, look. The boat comes along. It's going to hoover that thing up. And then it's going to go back over there, I think. Okay. And we're making money as we do this. And we've dropped off some stuff over there into that dock. What's that? Pound lock. Allows a recycling drone to travel up and down waterfalls. Okay, so if it needs to go up and down sort of water levels, then it can do that as well. My only concern is that just there. We have made a bit of a mistake with that one there. Um, hang on a minute. So, uh, is that high up? Uh, hang oh, that we need one of those. We need a thing. It has to go up here. Look, that one is high up. So hang on. So build that and then put that there. And the little boat should be able to use that lock there. It's going to come along, go up the lock. Here we go. We and then into there. Then it hoovers that thing up and then that thing's going to explode. And the boat kind of got stuck a bit there. Bit of a sort of three point turn or whatever. And then back that way. OK, this is wonderful. This is marvellous. Right. Reach 50 percent recycling to unlock. OK, so now we need to go and just recycle everything else. Yeah. Now, the only thing is about that is that over here. Look, we haven't got rivers. So we might now need to put down the great big kind of excavator things. We might need to get them in to make us some rivers. Because at the moment, yeah, we can't do anything. So I think we have to put that in. Look, it's going to obliterate that landscape. But we're kind of done with the landscape. Oh, it's awful. Right, OK. Right. Massive, great big, horrible laser coming in. Um, ah, the water hasn't gone as far over as I thought it might do. Hang on a second. <laughs> Let's get a little um, a water tower thing put in over there. Yay, there we go. Right, we can go all the way down there now. Wonderful. Right, so think. Hang on, step three. So can we put the water towers, the, the gathering tower in like that? So I think what we do is we put that there. That's going to hoover all that stuff up. And then we put a thing in like that. The boat can come along, grab all that. And that's that side sort of cleared. We might need to do something similar over here. But now we've got no power. Hang on a minute. Hang on. We have made a bit of a mess of this one. So if I put a thing there like that and then get a Digitron to go that way. So excavate that, please. So big laser. Sorry, everybody. Big horrible laser coming through. But there we go. Right. So that's tunneled all the way through there. Um... Is that, can, can we get a thing there? Can we get water there? Yes. Okay, right. So put that there. Then go to here. Then extract all those three things that we just built, which is a little bit of a nuisance. And then put that down and it can grab both of those things. Okay, little boat, come along and grab these things. Okay. Right, so now it can pick up that and that. Do a spot of boating and it'll take all the resources back. And then, yeah, that's got to help us get toward that goal. That was quite a lot of stuff, wasn't it? Um, okay, so now I've got to work on these over here. Then we've got some stuff in there as well. Right, hang on. What can we do over here then? So we've only got a few things there. So drop that in like that. That'll destroy those. Oh, there was a bit over there that we got as well, which is good. And I think that will... Grow. Hang on, hang on. Can we put that... Hang on, where does that reach? So we can put that right there... And it'll grab those two recycly spinny pod things. But then also, if we put something over there in that clearing, that'll pick that up as well. Right, so we can pick up the Arboretum thing and that turbine. So we can pick up three recycly things with only one recycling loading dock thing. Right, okay. So here comes... Do you know what? 
I want another boat. Can we get another boat? Um, no. Oh, I thought we could get another boat. We can't have another boat. That's a bit of a shame. But never mind. That's done really well toward our goal. That's really helpful. Um, okay. I can't really see what's in this bit. Where's the river in here? I think the river must... Ah, it comes through that way, look. Okay, so if we put that there... So that'll hoover up all those things. And then put that there. That'll hoover up all those. And then we need to get a dock potentially in the middle. Can we get one in the middle that's going to grab both? Um, yeah, hang on. I think that grabs both. Right, so do that. So we can get a little thing coming in. And you can pick up that silo and that silo. And now we've unlocked an animal observatory. Allows use of a sonar ping to encourage animal species to move into a habitat that is appropriate for them. Okay, I want one of those. And I would like one now, please, because they sound really exciting. Hang on, can we put one um, there? I don't know what it does, but we're going to put one in. The final step, as recycling progresses, is the reintroduction of animals. Okay, so we've done the flora, now it's time for the fauna. New animal species will help maintain the ecosystem long after your buildings are packed away. Animal species need to be scanned for. Open the scanning panel here. Ooh, okay. This grazer lives in herds on wide open grassland. He uses animal portraits to switch between animals and get a hint about where each species lives. This is wonderful. Use this button, that one, to scan for the selected species. Each scan will give you information about the suitability of the area scanned. You need to find a suitable habitat for at least three animal species. Okay, that's fine. We can do that. So wide open grassland. Okay. We haven't picked the best place for that because I didn't know how it worked. But now I know how that's going to work. It's going to be fine. So grassland. That is... What's that? An amphibian. That's a frog of some sort. That is a bear. That's some sort of duck. Uh, industrious rodent. Some, like, a, like a beaver or something like that. And that looks like a wolf. Okay, right. So maybe that one. Scan for that one, please. Have we found some animals? Scan it. Oh, hang on. Oh, we can scan anywhere we like. It's not where that thing is. Um, yeah, okay. Open plains. Scan over there. <gasps> a deer. We've got a deer. There's two deer. Oh, yes. We've got a pair of deers. It is wonderful. Okay, right. That's really exciting. We've got some animals. This is brilliant. Okay, hang on. We're going to keep on taking everything apart. But I like the fact that we do have animals. That's very exciting. Right, how far do those things reach? They reach... To near where that tree is. Okay, so we should, if we do that, be able to get those two things in. And that's this bit over here sorted out. So if we just pop that down, that's all fine. And there's more deer. More deer have appeared. This is wonderful. Okay, hang on a minute. Um, can we scan for... Um, I mean, wolves prowling a forest near to a source of prey. Ah, okay. There's no deer on this side of the river, so maybe not that. Amphibian lives in the reeds of a wetland near a finboss field. Perfect. Uh, yeah, scan there, please, because that's where there's going to be frogs. We've got frogs. This is, I love this. This is fantastic. There's a little frog. Hello, frog friend. Hopping around on your lily pads. This is brilliant. Oh, I love this. This is fantastic. Right. Okay, that's two animals. Possibly now we'll go and do some more recycling. Because over here, I think, might be quite tricky. Oh, hang on. There's a river. There's a river over there. It's going to be fine. So if we put that... Oh, hang on. If we're clever, we could grab that as well, look. So if we put that there... Oh, that moved at the end. Is that going to grab that thing? Yes, okay. And then we can put that there. So we can hoover that thing up fine without any problems. Along comes the boat. And then... We can put, uh, oh, oh, hang on. Oh, hang on. Is it a lack of power? It's a lack of space to build by the look of it. Okay, we can get rid of that thing. So that's fine. So that's gone. Um, okay. So we need to put that there then, do. Hang on. Put it back there. We'll collect all that stuff up later. So put that there. So whoosh. They can all come into here and then we'll have a little loading dock thing. So put that there. That's going to pick that recycling pod up. And I think that is that side of the river entirely clear of machines. Got some deer and stuff around, which is wonderful. Right. Final animal scan. 
So a forest which contains a beehive and is on a hill. That's very specific. I don't think we have the right conditions for a bear. Um, a web-footed waterfowl rests in a large lake when it's not flying. I don't think we have a suitable lake around, so not that. In just as rodent builds its home on a river near a forest, you say. We've got many of that. So we could get badger, uh, badgers, <laughs> beavers, not badger, a beaver pench. Or we could get a wolf. But the wolf is going to kill the deer and the deer are beautiful. So no, we're going to go for a, a beaver, not a badger. I think just there is perfect because that is, oh, okay. On a river near a forest. Um, oh, I thought that would have worked absolutely fine, but no, maybe, maybe here, just there possibly. Oh, there we go, beavers, yay. Right, so we've got our three animal types, which is brilliant. Um, okay, right, that worked really well. That's wonderful, we've got three types of animal and 74% of our buildings have been recycled. Okay, so we're now sort of, you know, counting down toward the end of all this. So if we put that... We need to get that calcinator thing in. So if we put that just there, that's going to allow us to grow loads of money left or whatever resources. So it doesn't matter too much about how much it costs to get the boat out to collect stuff. That is going to be an issue. And up there is going to be an issue because we need water. So we might need to do this thing again where we sort of ruin things a little bit, which is a bit of a shame, with a big kind of horrible diggy thing. But we need to do that, I think. So a horrible diggy thing build a horrible diggy thing with a laser so boom okay not great is the water not going to come in that's not how water works game but okay <laughs> we'll, we'll add our own water then all right we'll just put that in for now that's fine um, and then we need to go to number three so then we can collect oh we can't collect everything look we need two lots of these so if we put one like that that'll hoover up all that stuff and then another one just there that hoovers up all that stuff and then we say yep yeah, go out and make one trip that would be amazing so grab those two things and what's that going to do we're on 96 okay and the last one 98 oh hang on is there something hang on wet there must be a thing there must be th oh we've left oh hang on ah right yes that would make sense we've left the um this thing the pound lock We've left the lock on that thing. So we're, hang on. Yeah, we need to get rid of that. Sorry, everyone forgot about that. Right. And then just put that there. That's going to be fine. So is that going to be enough? So we go over here, pick that up. It goes boop. And we're on 100%. Okay, it was that tiny bit that we forgot about. So back here we go. And we're done. So now we've just got a lovely place, which started out as completely barren and dead and ruined. And it was just horrible poison ground and some rocks and some sticky trees. And now we're leaving it with some lovely, sort of lovely marshlands over there. Look, some wetlands and lily pads and reeds and things. And there's some badgers. Got badgers swimming around in the water. There's lovely grasslands. There's some nice kind of rocks there. Then we've got some nice big sort of for a forest with lovely big towering trees and shrubs and canopies and stuff. There's bees now. There's lovely kind of areas of wildflowers and such like. Over here, we've got more of the same kind of stuff. Some more rocks, some beavers. There's some deer. And then over here, we should see some frogs. Well, there's a frog. Hello, frog friend. So we've changed this place very much for the better. And now I think we leave. I think we can get out of here. So yeah, press that button and I think we just take off. What about the little boat? Uh, don't, the boat needs to go in the ship. <laughs> don't leave the boat behind. Oh dear. We've left technology behind everybody. We left the boat. Maybe they'll pick the boat up in a, like a crane or something. Uh, oh, yes, they are. They are picking the boat up. We haven't left the boat. Or maybe we did and that was an afterthought. And so I went, have we got the boat? No. Ah, uh, okay, get the uh, get the winch out. We'll get the boat. And the wasteland has been reclaimed. And it looks so much better. Not perfect. A bit rough around the edges, literally. But there we go. Oh, and look. You can have an appreciate button. And then you can just go and look at stuff. <laughs> okay, I like that. That's wonderful. Then you just going to have a little nosy around and look at the uh, results of your efforts. That is wonderful. 
I like that. It's like a sort of reverse city builder. It's like a reverse city builder where you wouldn't do the damage done by building cities and you know harvesting all the resources and mining the ground and draining all the water away and stuff. And you make it all natural again. It's wonderful. Okay, so what happens if we put continue? Do we go on to another level? Is there another bit of this? I assume there's like another thing. Oh, so we're working on a bit of a planet. Oh, I see. Right. Okay, thank you for the preview build. Yeah, okay, so that's all we can do for now. And then when we carry on, if we come back at some point, if I play again after March 28th, when the game comes out on PC and mobile, then um, yeah, we'll carry on. And it looks like we can go to different regions around this planet and make it less brown and more green, which is wonderful. Oh, I like that. So we're 12% of the way through doing the entire planet. Okay, so a little way to go, but we've made a start and it looks a little bit better down here anyway. Oh, and there's different biomes as well. So now in that new place where we go next, it looks like there's a beach biome, there's mangroves, there's a tropical forest, there's a coral reef, a beautiful coral reef and all sorts of different animals as well. It looks like we've got possibly sort of more ocean kind of life going on. That looks like a shark. Don't quite know, that is a whale possibly. That looks like a parrot possibly a turtle. So yeah, that's all kind of beachy and tropical. That was more temperate. That might be deserty and that might be icy or whatever. Oh, that's very exciting. Oh, I like that. It's not just one level you do again. There's different biomes and different types of animals and everything else. That is wonderful. Well, there we go. We reached the end of the preview build. And I think that was a pretty good look at how the game is going to work and what you have to do. And I really enjoyed that. I remember liking it last time when we played it when it was all sort of pixely. But now I think they've taken it and they've made it into more of an event of a game, I think. So you have that planet to work on. I don't recall that planet being in the previous version of the game. I think you just kind of had a level to work on. You kind of had a map and that was kind of it. But I think yeah, you've got kind of a goal now go and terraform the entire planet and there's different types of biomes and animals and creatures and flora and fauna and everything else it's all very wonderful and again i do like the fact that you tidy up after yourself you're kind of going in and going right okay we're going to make this lovely but we have to tidy up we can't just leave all these machines lying around because that makes it look untidy and a bit ugly and we want nature to prevail so hang on let's just tidy all the stuff up and that is part of the challenge that's part of the challenge of how you play the game you have to kind of get everything sorted out in terms of, you know, greenery and trees and plants and things. But then you have to tidy up after yourself as well. So you do need to kind of think maybe ahead a bit as to how you're best going to do that. How you're best going to pick up all the things you put down are things near to rivers and such like. So I like that. That's a wonderful, wonderful game. I'm really glad that we've gone back into it and had a look. Now it's kind of had a little bit of a graphical uplift. So yeah, really, really enjoyed that. Comes out on the 28th on both PC and mobile, which is quite exciting. So yeah, if you're interested, there is a link to the Terranil website in the video description below where you can go and have a look at where you can buy it on Steam or mobile devices or whatever. But yeah, we'll wrap things up for now because of course we can't do any more in this preview build that we have. But uh, yeah, we might well pop back into that at some point and have a look at one of the other buy biomes because I really enjoyed that and I'd like to see what the game looks like when we're not in a lovely kind of temperate foresty area. I'd like to see what it looks like when we're somewhere else. So we might well pop back to this at some point and just have a little nosy at some other parts of the world and see if we can terraform them and get them all looking lovely as well. But yeah, we'll finish up for now. Hopefully you did enjoy this. If you did, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with all the other bits and bobs that we get up to in the Geek Cupboard, as well well as keeping up with Terra Nil when we pop back to it at some point in the future to look at the exciting new biomes and have a little look at the exciting new animals as well. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. This robotic arm has salmonella on it. Okay, so we've got two things that are diseased. Be warned about tutorial robot. He's all sort of retro and adorable. I think he wants to destroy humanity. <laughs> Hungry humans, come and order some food. 74% efficiency. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. There he is. There's the murderous robot face. 